Welcome back. Recently, we've been studying how to prove triangles congruent, and we did that using side angle side, side side side, and angle side angle. And then we introduced some additional challenge. We introduced altitudes and medians, and we did some work with circles, and we extended our proofs beyond just proving triangles congruent um, to proving their corresponding parts congruent congruent. So we did that along with introducing the other vocabulary and concepts of altitudes and medians. In this section, we're going to take it one step further. We're going to still prove triangles congruent, but now we're going to work with overlapping triangles. The increase in challenge here is in the diagram. That's the thing that we're changing. So Let's take a look at overlapping triangles and proving them congruent. The first thing you're going to want to do is, you know, take a look at your givens, read your givens, relate them to what's going on in your diagram, and figure out which triangles you'll have to prove congruent in order to achieve your goal. Different diagrams will have different options and different possibilities and maybe even different pairs of triangles. So let's take a look at our sample problem. Our goal is going to be to prove segment ZW congruent to segment YW. So looking at this, there are a variety of triangles, but it should be fairly obvious that we are going to want to prove triangle ZWX so this triangle that I'm outlining in red, congruent to the overlapping triangle Y, W, A. So we're going to want to get the blue triangle congruent to the red overlapping triangle. So our first given is that Y, W bisects segment A, X. So YW is a bisector of AX. Well, I'll put tick marks in because we know a bisector is going to divide a segment into two congruent segments. So we can put right into our proof that segment AW is congruent to segment XW. And the reason is a bisector divides a segment into two congruent segments. Then we're given that angle A is congruent to angle X. So angle A is congruent to angle X. And we see here we have an angle and a side. So we're either going to have side angle side or angle side angle. Another given is that angle five is congruent to angle six. Well, this is almost angle side angle. Unfortunately, five and six, angle five does not take up the entire angle that we need in triangle AWY, and nor does angle six take up the entire angle that we need and triangle ZWX. We need to get this entire big angle congruent. We need to get all of it angle ZWX congruent to all of angle AWY. So you may see we have some addition here. If we add our angle 7 to angle 5, that's going to give us what we need. And if we add angle 7 to angle 6, that's going to give us what we need. So Step five, we're going to say that angle seven is congruent to angle seven by reflexive because we're going to add that angle seven to angle five and we're going to add that angle seven to angle six. And if we know that the same angle is added to two congruent angles, their sums are congruent. So then we know angle AWY is congruent to angle 
xwz by addition of the same angle. So we can do addition same. And step seven, now we have triangle AWI. Now triangle AWI, AWI is congruent to triangle XWZ. So make sure you have your correct correspondence, and we do. And that is by angle side angle. And the steps lead that lead to that are steps two, that's our side. Our angle is step three, angle A is congruent to angle X. Can't use five and six, because those aren't angles of our triangle, but our step six here is. So we've got steps uh, three, two, and six, our angle, our side, and our angle. And then we know that segment ZW is congruent to segment YW. And that is our corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or CPCPC. So there's a sample proof of an overlapping triangle. You'll get some more practice on that when I see you in class.